Hi, my name is Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school computer science teacher. We're working on a space shooter game, and today is the day we start keyboard input. So we have uh, the game screen class. Let's just scroll down to the render method. This is where a lot of the activity happens. Batch.begin is for starting the drawing process. We update some stuff, draw the background, and so on. And just before here, this is where we are going to write a method that is going to detect and handle any input from the keyboard or later from touch events or from the mouse. So let's just uh, put that method right here. And we're going to go write that in a separate place. So we don't have to do anything else inside the render method. The detect input method is the one that's going to do all the action. And we'll just write it down as a private method down here. Private void detect input. And once again, it takes a float for the delta time. The reason it needs to know how much time has passed is because it's going to do the movement of the ships itself inside the detect input method. It will tell the ships to move. So we have two kinds of input. We have the keyboard input and we have the touch input, which is also the mouse input. In libgdx, the mouse is essentially another touch input, um, which can only have a single location on the screen. Whereas, you know, with touch input, you can have multiple fingers touching the screen, for example. So today we're just going to work on the keyboard input. We'll do that first, and then uh, next time we'll look at the touch input separately. Our strategy for this uh, keyboard input is to determine the maximum distance the ship can move in each direction, and then check each possible keystroke that matters, and we move accordingly. So, for example, if the ship is allowed to move um, a, a small distance to the right and the user is pressing the right key, move the ship to the right. But if the ship is already against the, the right-hand edge of the screen, we don't want to move any further. So that's what I mean by finding the maximum distance the ship can move, and we need to do that in each direction. Okay, so let's begin by calculating those values first, the maximum distance that the ship can move in each direction. And I'm going to make a design choice here that I'll explain in a minute. We're going to have a series of floats. One of them is going to be the left limit, so movement to the left. There's the right limit, the up limit, and the down limit. So these limits will be the distance that the ship is allowed to move. Not a location, but a change in location. So the left limit then is going to be the distance to the left edge of the screen from the position of the ship right now. Well, the position of the ship is the player ship, oops, player ship dot bounding box. We did that in the last video, dot x. That's the current player ship's position. Now that's how far it is to the left. Now we're going to make another design choice here. I'm going to use that as a negative value. Left is going to be negative, right is going to be positive. This is going to matter when we actually do the movements later on. Uh, left will be subtracting from x, so it's easier to have a, a negative number for all of our left numbers and also for our down numbers. So while we're at it, let's do the down limit because it's really similar. The down limit is the negative version of the player ship's bounding box y value. So for example, if the ship is at x value 100, the limit on the left hand side is negative 100, 100 to the left. If the ship was 50 pixel or 50 uh, units from the bottom of the screen, then the down limit would be negative 50. Now the right and up limits are more complicated. Let's start with the right one, it's a little bit simpler. We need to know how far is it from the right edge of the screen, and we're working in world units here. So we'll have world width, but we need to subtract from it how far the uh, player is from the right, uh, sorry, from the left edge of the screen actually. So let me just show you, it might be easier. Bounding box dot x, that's the x position of the ship. So with some numbers, let's say for example, the ship is at 200 and the width of the world is 300. That'd be 300 minus 200, 100 is what's left on the right. However, the ship has its own width as well. We need to subtract it because we want the right edge of the ship to be our limit. Okay, let's try the upper limit now. Really similar. We're going to make a, a change in a moment, but start with this. 
we'll take the height of the world, we subtract the player ship's bounding box's Y value, that's the bottom of the ship, so we also need to subtract the player ship's uh, height, bounding box dot height. Now this would allow the ship to move all the way to the top edge of the screen. And I actually don't want that. I want the ship to be limited so it can't go so high. So I'm going to cut that world height in half. So our world height I think was something like 128. So this would change it to 64 minus the player ship's position. The, the Y positions are based on the bottom of the screen. So this is going to work out. Okay, now that we know the limits on each direction, let's start checking for keystrokes to see if left, right, down, and up were pressed. And you can press more than one at a time. So we use an if statement. We're going to have four if statements, one for each. We're not going to use else ifs because we do want the ship to be able to move in, let's say, uh, up and to the left at the same time. What we're going to check for is this, gdx.input.is key pressed and you see there's more than one but we want the one that says is key pressed it takes an integer the integer is stored here input dot keys dot and if we're going to do the let's say the right one first it works like that if gdx dot input dot is key pressed input dot keys dot right so the user is currently pressing the right key we want to be moving to the right as long as there is room so we're going to have another statement and the right limit is more than zero. That is, there is some room to the right. So once again, is the right key being pressed and is the right limit greater than zero? So it can't be equal to zero. If it's zero, we don't need to move. And if it is, we're going to uh, go ahead and tell the ship to move. We're going to write a bit of code here. We are going to simplify it in a moment, but for now I'm going to write it out in sort of a longer form. The X change, the horizontal change in the ship, is going to be equal to the player ship's movement speed, which is a field variable in that class, multiplied by the delta time. So for example, if the player ship's movement speed is 5, and the amount of time that's passed is, let's say, half of a second, then it would be 5 times half a second, so 2.5 units is how far the player ship would move. Uh, of course, these numbers, the delta time, will be much, much smaller than that, but just as an example. Okay, that's cool, but what if the right limit was something like 1 unit, and this calculation gave us 2.5? We don't really want to move that far. So instead, we have to double check that we have chosen the smallest value between this number we've calculated and the actual right limit. So the x change is going to get modified. It will now become equal to math.min, that's the minimum, of these two values, the original x change and the right limit. Whichever of those is smaller is now what x change is. So if it was calculated at 2.5, the right limit was 1, it'll get shrink, shrunk down to 1. That's a strange way to say that, but go with it. All right, now we need to tell the player ship to move. We're going to be making these horizontal and vertical changes quite a bit. So I think what we should do is make a quick method that will look after this. So I would like to be able to type something like this, playership.translate. Translate is the word we use for moving things uh, up, down, left, right. So translate in the x direction and translate in the y direction. So I would like to translate x in the x direction, and in this case nothing, zero, in the y direction. I put an f there because this is going to be a floating point number. Now this is red because this method doesn't exist yet. I'll need to do this for both kinds of ships, so I'm going to go to the ship class to write this method. Not the player ship class, the ship class. Uh, let's just go down maybe before the draw method here. Public void translate float x change float y change. Sometimes we use the words delta x, delta y, but uh, change is fine. So Remember, we're using a bounding box now, so what we want to do is update the bounding box. What we want to use is the old position, bounding box dot x, plus the x change, bounding box dot y, plus the y change. So take the old value and add the change onto it, and do that for both x and y. Now I can use this translate method anytime I want to in the game screen class. So there it is there. Okay, so we're going to do this for each of the other buttons, um, 
bef sorry, the other uh, keyboard keys. Before we do though, I want you to notice how I wrote this. I made a variable called x change. I put a value in it. Then I took that value and I found the minimum with another value and stuck that in x change and then I used it once. So all of this really could be done in a single line of code. So I'm going to write that line of code down here uh, and then I'm going to remove the original one. Um, you don't always want to do this, but it is going to make this code very slightly faster. But it is a little harder to read. So x change ended up becoming this, right? So I'm going to copy that. That's the x change that we're translating, 0f. And the original x change value was this one. So now what this says is, translate in the x direction the minimum of player ship movement speed times time and then the right limit. So all of that is now a single large calculation and I don't need any of these lines of code. I don't need to declare a variable. I can do this all in a single line. So you don't have to make that change. If you don't like it, don't do it. But it is a single line way to write that without declaring new variables. Okay, so that was the right version. I'm going to copy that and paste it for the up version, because up is really similar. We're moving in a positive direction. And instead of the um, movement here being in the x direction, get rid of that, it will be a movement in the y direction. And instead of right limit, we have up limit. So let's just double check that. Move zero in the x direction, and then move the minimum of the movement speed times the time, and the upper limit, that's the uh, vertical movement. Okay, everything's very similar between right and up. We're going to have kind of the opposite thing happening for left and down, though. So let me copy the right one here. And we'll do this for the down version, uh, sorry, the left version. So change that to left. Now, the left limit is going to be a negative number. So what we want is if the left limit is below zero, that is, you can move left. Now, you don't have to do it this way. You could do things all with positive numbers and just change the translation. I personally like to do it like this. I find it simpler for my brain, but you can do it in the opposite direction if you want. So the movement then is going to be not the minimum, but it will actually be the maximum. Uh, so we actually want to know what's the larger of the two numbers, or the uh, higher of the two numbers, the maximum which is closer to zero for these negative values. No y change. Okay, so if that's really confusing, you're going to want to ask me a question in the comments down below, but give it a try uh, first and see if, if uh, it's helpful to you. And if you're not interested, well, just type it in. Same thing for the down. We want something that's less than zero. That is, we are moving downwards. And the maximum here needs to be, all this needs to be in the y direction instead. And that'll be the down limit. You know what I just realized? I made a mistake here. The movement speed should be the negative version of that since we're moving in a negative direction, both for left and for down. Pretty complicated, I get it. So go ahead and ask me a question if you're not sure. Let's play it and see if I've made any boo-boos. Okay, I'm going to start pressing the left key. Um, my ship is moving to the left very slowly. The right key. Okay, up. And down. Okay, all of the keys are working. My speed is very, very slow. So let's go and change that. We just put in some starter values inside the game screen class. Scroll up to where we created the ships, which was here. And I'm going to change the movement speed instead of two. Let's make it something big, like, uh, let's see, our world is 72 wide. So if I do like 36, maybe, that would be, I could get halfway across the screen in one second. I don't even know if that's fast enough. Let's go a little higher, like 48. Let's run that. Okay, not too bad. Maybe, a, oh yeah, that's pretty good. So I can move around now and try to avoid the ships, uh, sorry, the lasers. You'll notice that I can't move any higher. I'm pressing up right now. Also, maybe want to think about how fast my lasers are, making them overlap. So now we have movement, cool. So next time we're gonna work on how to use 
mouse input or touch input to sort of drag the ship around the screen in the direction of the mouse. Essentially, we're going to click or tap somewhere and the ship will move as fast as possible towards the um, wherever your pointer or your finger is. Once again, up to the limits around the edge of the screen. I should double check, yeah, the ship doesn't go past the edges of the screen at the bottom and the uh, sides as well. Okay, so that's it so far. Feel free to ask questions as usual and remember that the source code files are all um, linked to in the description under the video. Thanks very much.